Hello and welcome back to my channel. I normally don't do introductions, but I just wanted to say hello to all the new faces around here. There's been an influx of new members, which is very exciting because the community is growing. People are helping each other in the comments with skincare questions. It's like phenomenal. So if you're new here, my name is Romy. I love skincare and beauty in general. Most of the time you'll find me on emorebeauty.com where I have a blog or Instagram where my username is at emorebeauty, Y-M-O-R. Um, it's basically just my name backwards. <laughs> Today is gonna be a bit more relaxed. The last few videos have been quite technical and scientific, but I'm having a moment right now. I'm low on energy, just really stressed out, traveling a lot, and I just wanted to do my skincare with you. Before I get into it, just a disclaimer, the routine that I'm gonna show you is not like my norm. Um, this is more of a self-care slash I really need to take care of my skin routine. It's very decadent, multiple steps. It's not something I would normally do. My first step is an excessive amount of masking. When I triple mask, I like to start off with an acid mask, then a clay mask, then a soothing mask. I don't know why, but this sequence sort of makes more sense in my mind. So the first thing I'm gonna use is this Tata Harper uh, resurfacing mask. All her ingredients come from natural sources, so she relies very heavily on BHA. My skin right now is dealing with some serious clogged pores, acne. I've been picking up my face. You probably can't see it on camera because the lights will blow it out. But if you look closely, you'll see that uh, I have clogged pores and um, some acne forming around my chin. So I'm relying on the BHA in here, which is salicylic acid, to cleanse my skin. So like I was saying, she uses natural sources, so she relies heavily on BHA. I don't think she has any AHA products. And the reason why is because she uses willow bark. Interestingly enough, salicylic acid, or the BHA, is what you find in aspirin. And back in the day, they discovered aspirin slash salicylic acid when um, they started using willow bark. It's a tree. So that's where she, now we do it in the lab and it's synthetic, but that's where she gets her BHA. She uses it from willow bark extract. So what I'm doing right now is just applying a thin layer evenly across my face. I uh, never really go into my orbital zone. I just go around it. So I'm gonna leave this on for probably five, 10 minutes. I'm not sure what she recommends, but when it comes to acid masks, uh, go on the lower end of the time spectrum, especially if sensitive skin, you don't want it sitting too much on your skin. I know this is quite pricey. Another alternative, like an acid-based mask would be the Vichy mask. It has like, I can't think of the name right now, but it has a pink formula. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take off the Tata Harper resurfacing mask. I just got this lukewarm cloth. I'm gonna try to wipe it off. I say lukewarm because I normally try to keep the temperature pretty stable for my water. Water is pretty irritating to the skin. So this whole hot and cold phenomenon doesn't really benefit your skin, to be honest. So I don't think I mentioned it, but I applied this mask on a clean face. Right before I started, I took off my sunscreen because I woke up early and went outside. I, I put sunscreen right away. And even if I'm not going outside, I put sunscreen because like the sun rays do come through your window and they are impacting your skin. Um, so I took off the layer of sunscreen with my favorite Garnier Missler water. Now that I'm done with my first mask, I'm gonna go in with the second, which is this Omorovitsa Ultramora Mud Mask. It's pricey, I know, but you could look at other masks like the L'Oreal clay base mask. They have a few options, just make sure it's not too fragrant. I like to concentrate clay base masks around my nose. I have pretty large sebaceous filaments and they and they accumulate dirt a lot and they start to look like gray dots on my nose. It's very annoying. Usually consistent acid use in clay-based masks helps me uh, minimize the appearance of them. All right, the second mask is on. I'm gonna let that dry. This one is very similar to the Gravity Mud from Glam Glow where um, it has this dark color when it's wet but it becomes pale when it's dry. So I'm gonna let that happen and then I'll be back been a couple of minutes and I don't know if you could see it's starting to dry up pretty well. The last mask that I'm going to use is the Rose Fresh Hydration Mask. It's just a form of kindness to my skin, a way to rescue and replenish after using two relatively harsh masks. When I opened it, I realized this is all I have left, so I'm going to probably use all of that on my face now. It's probably not enough, but it's such a... 
I love this formula. It's a great way to soothe my skin after something that's harsh, like whether it's an acid or a clay mask. I'm trying to think of a affordable rose-based mask. I think Pixi might have one. I'm pretty sure I've seen it before. I don't know if it's a mask or a some form of primer. I mean, any hydrating or nourishing mask will do the job. It doesn't have to be rose-based. It's really funny. On one video, I don't get angry comments. I only got maybe three in the history of my YouTube career, which isn't very long, but I have quite a few videos out there. Um, I just remember one dude just getting so angry about self-care, saying it's like a social construct and it's a waste of money. Well, yeah, dude, like self-care, everything's a social construct, including self-care. But we've been taking milk baths since Cleopatra's time, so self-care is not new. It just has taken on a different definition. So I'm gonna give this a couple minutes just to soak into my skin and then I'm gonna rinse off the top layer and get into my actual skincare routine. Okay, I just washed off the rose face mask and I left my face a little bit wet. Before I put on my hydrating face cream or my hydrating serum, I like to do it on wet skin because I'm slowing down the transepidermal water loss. This is just the natural way we lose um, water into the atmosphere, it just evaporates. But I'm gonna add an extra layer of hydration or water with my Rose Floral Toner from Fresh. Now that I have that extra wet layer on my skin, I'm gonna go in with my hydrating serum, which right now is the Drunk Elephant B Hydra. This has vitamin B5 in it. What your face cream should be doing, not necessarily your serum, but your face cream should be acting like uh, an occlusive to this water loss. Like it should be keeping water in your skin. While my face is still a little wet from the floral toner and the serum, I'm gonna go in with my face cream. Right now I'm using the Lala Retro Cream just to finish up the old formulation. I don't know if you saw my previous video, but they have reformulated the whipped cream to add ceramides. Now that I have my face cream, I'm going to go in with my vitamin C serum because it's the daytime and I like to use my vitamin C in the morning. I put this on last because it's oily and I prefer to put my oils last versus my water-based products. Everything's going to get absorbed by your skin. Your skin is made of both fat and water, so you know everything's going to go through. It just depends how much work it's going to take to get there. And in my opinion, I'm making it easier by putting the water closest to my skin and the oils furthest. I want to do a vitamin C video because sometimes it can be kind of controversial. Is that a right word? Ingredient. Some people don't like to use it because they say it's not stable enough. And they don't believe in it, which is okay. But I find vitamin C does really well for my skin and it, I see improvements when I use it. This formulation from SkinCeuticals is the CE Ferulic Serum. Vitamin C is very finicky, but when you add vitamin E and ferulic acid, you stabilize the molecule a lot easier. This one is very expensive, like it's $170. A more affordable version would be the Drunk Elephant C Firma Serum, but I can't think of a more affordable formulation. Sometimes with vitamin C, if you're willing to spend, you want a good formulation. You can't just take any type of vitamin C because they're not all made equally. I'm just gonna give it a second to seep into my skin. I find the serum makes my skin a little tacky and um, before I get into my sunscreen, I want this to be fully absorbed. But maybe while we're waiting, I forgot my lips, so I'm gonna pull out some lip products. I got this cool lip scrub from Fenty Beauty. It's actually really travel friendly because it comes in a, like a lipstick form. You just scrub your lips with it. Most of the grainy residue has melted, but I'm gonna just wipe it off with a cloth. Having something like this is just nice and luxurious, so don't feel like you have to go out and buy this. With the Fenty Beauty, I got this Pearl Kisser Luscious Lip Balm, so we're gonna try it. This video is turning into a first impressions, but honestly, I'm just killing time for the uh, vitamin C serum to seep into my skin. While we're waiting, I'm gonna go in with my eye cream. I've been a huge fan since Christmas, I think, of the Black Tea Firming Serum from Fresh. It's just so refreshing and lightweight. I don't have to deal with Melia. Some eye creams, because of their richness, will cause Melia. I've never experienced it with this. It's very, just super lightweight. And I do find it softens my fine lines. But again, it's another expensive eye cream. There's one thing that I have yet to find is a drugstore eye cream that actually works. My skin is feeling really good, but now on to the most important part and the only thing that you should probably be actually wearing. 
I'm trying a new sunscreen today. It's the Neostrata Sheer Physical Protection Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is tinted and I find uh, it does separate like the oils from the water if you don't shake it really well. It's also tinted which I don't like for everyday use but I find it does sheer out after a little bit and I, it's like a universal tint I think. This is a physical sunscreen which is what I prefer to use. But if you like chemical sunscreens, that's okay too. Physical sunscreens act like a barrier, so they don't break down like chemical sunscreen. You will know it's a physical sunscreen when you see things like titanium di dioxide or zinc oxide. And most of the time it comes with that thick white cast kind of vibe to it, which is why some brands tint it. The reason why I'm putting sunscreen, even though I'm not going out, is because my desk is in front of a window and sun rays come through the window regardless. I the feel of this Neostrata sunscreen, but it's very oily. So I don't know how this is going to feel for somebody with oily skin. We'll see how, how well it dries. It definitely leaves a healthy glow. Make sure to get your eyelids. Never forget your ears. This is a broad spectrum, so it protects you from UVA and UVB. UVB is what burns the skin, like what causes sunburn, but UVA is what we call like a silent killer. It actually penetrates even deeper into the skin. And this one has PA with four pluses. And if you ever see that on a sunscreen, it's like a, like a scale from Japan that indicates how well it protects you from UVA, but it's not very well regulated and not all brands use it or it's not as recognized by all brands. Um, this one says PA++++, which has maximum UVA coverage. But when a sunscreen says broad spectrum, it's a given that it protects you against UVA and UVB. So don't just rely on these letters at the bottom. Look at the SPF and whether it's broad spectrum. That wraps up my little I'm almost having a nervous breakdown skincare routine. It, again, it's very luxurious. It's decadent. You don't have to do all of this, but that was just my way of it's like a makeup routine. It has multiple layers and it's just a way to make me feel better. And Thank you for doing your skincare with me. If you did follow along, let me know what products you use, what masks you use, or if you're going to do this later on, just share your routine. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you very soon.